So we're all currently cooped up in our homes trying not to run into anyone in the streets. I never thought I would live in a time when going to the grocery store was such a dangerous event. You walk into Walmart and everyone has a mask on like you're in the movie Contagion. The strange part is when people are going to the stores in massive herds to buy all the toilet paper. Didn't they realize that toilet paper is not going to be that important when the world falls apart? Also, grouping up like that is a great way to catch the virus. But thank God most people live through this virus. It's somewhere around 3% of people who catch it will have a fatal case, but they think 70% of the people who have it are asymptomatic, meaning they won't even show signs that they are carrying it. But there are viruses that are much worse. If they broke out, there's a good chance we would see a much scarier situation than the one we are in now. You wouldn't be worried about catching a cold, you would be worried about your cells being ripped apart as your whole body is turned into a giant pile of bloody tissue. I'm your host Jade Reyna, and on today's Life's Biggest Questions, we are going to be answering the question, what if Ebola came back? Now I know Ebola is bad, you at home know Ebola is bad, and we all never want to catch Ebola. But what is Ebola and how does it work? Well it's a virus, duh, and viruses are a little bit of RNA or DNA. They are not like single celled organisms who can live and operate on their own, every cell needs to leech onto another living thing to survive. They want to get into your body so they can survive, but their survival will inevitably lead to your demise. Now if Ebola is sneaky enough to work its way into your body, then it will start to go to work on your immune system. It will attach itself to dendritic cells. These are cells that are in charge of your immune system. So it's safe to say that they are very important. Normally when a little pest works its way into your body, the dendritic cells will tell all of your body's defenses to destroy it, and then you will feel nice and happy and move on. Think of it as the head coach calling all the plays to the winning game, but when Ebola comes in, it takes over these cells and transforms them into an Ebola factory. The former head coach of your immune system is now selling plays to all the other teams. I don't know if that analogy makes sense, but what is happening is the virus needs cells to reproduce, so Ebola is now hijacking some of the most important cells to do this. Now you think your antibodies would come in and destroy these defective dendritic cells. Well, not exactly. The dendritic cells are their boss, so these newly brainwashed cells tell your antibodies to prematurely die. Then the dendritic cells cells will explode, firing out all the reproduced Ebola cells and the vicious cycle has started. Now it does not stop there, Ebola will continue to infect your body's defensives. The microphages and many other defensive cells get infected and now our mind controlled Ebola army. At this point the house is on fire and it is time to get out, but you can't get out because it's your own dang body dude. Now this is where some of the more severe symptoms of Ebola can start to manifest. These corrupted cells will tell all of the cells holding your body's blood and fluids in to start letting that fluid out into your body. That's when people will bleed from their eyes, ears, and possibly even their anus. This process will continue until your body is ripped apart at a cellular level. Not a lot of people are able to beat out this virus. The death rate can vary. In some studies it has shown that 70% of people infected won't make it to the other side without their body falling apart piece by piece. But there are some people who think that 90% of the people infected will meet an early grave because of this horrible sickness. And how does one contract this zombie virus? Well, physical contact seems to be the leading cause. As far as I know, if you have some sort of fluid or matter that crosses into your body or bloodstream containing the virus, then you will catch it. You're not going to catch it through a cough. Thank God Ebola isn't airborne. That sounds like the start of some sort of Eli Roth movie where people's eyes start to burst out of their head into bloody messes on the floor. No, as long as you don't get the fluids into you, you're good. That means it can be transferred sexually, so if you needed another reason to wear a condom, well, that's one there for you. Something terrifying about this sickness is that it can be found present in dead flesh. Are you kidding me? This is a kill it with fire type situation. I'm going to treat every dead body with Ebola like the creature from the thing. I don't get anywhere near it and I'm going to blast it with a flamethrower. And what is the origin of this horrible sickness? Well, it seems like it crossed over from animals like SARS, COVID, and HIV. The actual culprit is still unknown, but people think it might have come from bats or monkeys. So if Ebola and COVID come from bats, maybe we should stop eating bats? Take those little demonic disease carriers off the menu, please. Now that we have an idea of what the Ebola virus is, let's take a look at what the world might look like if this virus came back. Well, most of the world is already self-isolated so we wouldn't need to worry about catching it at all. No matter where it broke out, people would probably be protected inside their homes, except Belarus. Did you guys see the president of Belarus? They asked him why they weren't quarantining, and he said, because Belarus is strong. I mean, I think this is a big mistake, but if they come out on the other side of this pandemic COVID-free without any sort of quarantine, then he would have proven his point and he's kind of be right. I, I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. But this is what would be terrible about it if it came back right now. If you start getting 
sick from Ebola, it starts with fever, maybe stomach pains, and then diarrhea. Well, you're probably gonna go to the hospital because you're sick, and you might be concerned you caught the current virus that is wreaking havoc on the world. Well, once you get to the hospital, it's going to be packed with people, and right there, you could have a massive outbreak. All the nurses and doctors are working overtime, and everyone is sick. In New York, nurses and doctors are forced to wear a single-use mask all day because they don't have enough. Everyone's immune system is down. That would be the worst possible situation. It would be even worse if they sent that person home and they have infected a few people at the hospital because then it wouldn't just be contained at the hospital. That person would probably stop at a pharmacy on the way home and then get some food and then it would be all over a major city and it wouldn't take long before people started dying from Ebola. At this point, everything would be in full lockdown. No one is going outside anywhere. The military comes in and then starts controlling everything and delivering food rations to people. Two viruses at the same time. Can the world calm down a little bit? Well, maybe that's what April's gonna be. Actually, I think April is gonna be the turning point where everything starts to get better, but that's just me. I really don't know what will happen. Maybe things will actually get worse. I hope not. <laughs> but right now would really be the worst time for an Ebola outbreak. The world is already in full crisis mode and we wouldn't have the means to help anyone. And if there was another outbreak in a major city, that would mean millions could potentially die. The good thing is that we do have an Ebola vaccine. It's not 100% effective, but it would help a lot of people. Now let's look at this from a little bit of a different angle. Let's say Ebola came back at a time when the world isn't trying to pick up the pieces and make sure everyone doesn't die and that we have enough ventilators for everybody. Well, Ebola is transferred through physical touch, so there's a good chance it would be contained very quickly and it usually comes from bats and monkeys and has been known to come from Africa, so we'd most likely see the outbreak there again. The threat would be real, but not too serious. Some people might die, but we most likely wouldn't see anywhere close to a major pandemic and we would hopefully see it go away in a few months and it would just be something for the news to talk about for a little bit. But what if it wasn't like that? What if it came back leveled up? The same way Corona just started out as something that was hanging out on bats. People were eating bats all the time and then it got serious. Then it got the balls to take on the whole world. It mutated a few times and now it can shut down an adult's lungs overnight. Well, it's not that fast, but you guys get what I mean. What if Ebola mutated and it came back even deadlier than a disease that can rip your body apart cell by cell? What if Ebola came back and it was now airborne. Well, if it was a world post-coronavirus, then we might be able to handle it because everyone remembers what it's like to stay inside and not touch anything, but it would still be so much worse. If this thing spread as fast as corona and was as contagious or more contagious, then we would see deaths in the millions death rate can be as high as 90%. No country would be able to hide it. There's a lot of speculation that places like China, Russia, and North Korea are fudging the numbers on how many people are infected with COVID-19. But what if this was an airborne Ebola? It would be posted everywhere. There would be videos of people dead, lying in the streets. Hospital floors would be covered in blood. People would be dying in their homes. I think we can all hope that this disease never comes back and that the current pandemic is the last one that we see in our lifetimes. God, I thought by now we were supposed to have flying cars jetpacks, and all disease was supposed to be a thing of the past. Well, maybe those miracles will happen in the next hundred years if we don't all die as a species before then. Well, thank you for tuning in to Life's Biggest Questions. If you have any ideas about this episode, or you want to hit me up, or you want to let me know something, hit up the comment section. And as always, guys, I would love it if you guys could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Until next time, I have been your host, Jada Reyna, and I am here to answer all your questions. Bye.